Hello, I'm Professor Fred Lublin from the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I'm joined in this collaboration by Dr. Dieter Hiring from Novartis and Professor Robert Burmel from the Cleveland Clinic. On behalf of all of our co-authors, we're going to explain on how using big data approaches has added to the current understanding of MS progression and what this means for the practical management of MS. We're going to discuss our paper in brain on how patients with multiple sclerosis acquire disability. In this collaboration, Novartis and the University of Oxford's Big Data Institute and global MS experts are using cutting edge analytical approaches to answer some of the key outstanding clinical questions in the field of MS. Only now with advanced analytic techniques are we able to evaluate such large data sets to improve our understanding of how patients with MS acquire disability. The key outstanding questions to be addressed in this study are, what are the impact of relapses on acquiring disability? What is the role of PIRA, regression independent of relapse activity? What are the important risk factors for disability accumulation? And what impact does treatment have on the time to reach milestone disability levels? These analyses are based on the Novartis Oxford MS data pool called NO.MS, an unprecedented, curated, robust data set from all 35 Novartis clinical trials in MS, spanning the entire spectrum of MS phenotypes. For some, MS is a progressive disease with patients experiencing gradual worsening of disability over time. There are two main mechanisms by which patients with MS develop disability and impairment. One is the stepwise accrual of impairment due to incomplete recovery from a relapse, that is relapse-associated worsening or RAW, R-A-W. Patients worsen and then may recover partially. The residual worsening is RAW. And then there's progression independent of relapse activity, what we call PIRA, where patients worsen and should not recover because they're gradually progressing. And the important point is they're progressing in the absence of any relapses. We use the NO.MS data to investigate the relative contributions of disability accrual, that is raw versus PIRA, across all MS phenotypes, and to determine when PIRA starts in the disease continuum and what its role is over time. And now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Dieter Haring. Thank you, Professor Lublin. Moving to the results, this figure illustrates the disease continuum of MS. From left to right, pediatric MS, adult relapsing remitting MS, secondary progressive MS, and primary progressive MS. Red represents the proportion of patients who relapsed within two years, and blue represents those who did not relapse. Relapses were most frequent in pediatric MS, less frequent in adult RMS, and least frequent in progressive MS. Surprisingly, they are still present in patients with PPMS who by definition do not relapse. The gray boxes represent those patients who experienced confirmed disability worsening over two years. We can see that the proportion of patients with an all-cause disability worsening becomes greater from left to right. Disability accumulation is least frequently seen early in the disease and becomes more prominent in the progressive phase of MS. The brown boxes show disability worsening events that are linked directly to the occurrence of relapses. These are raw events. In young patients, disability worsening is strongly linked to the occurrence of relapses, but we can see that raw also occurs, although with lower frequency, later in the disease in progressive MS patients. The green boxes show progression independent of relapse activity, PIRA. PIRA starts early in RMS and can be observed even in pediatric patients. In adult RMS, approximately half the confirmed disability worsening occurs independent of relapse activity. PIRA becomes the dominant driver of disability accumulation in the progressive phase of the disease. Overall, our analysis of the NO-MS database shows that there is a gradient of focal inflammation and progression throughout the MS disease continuum. Thank you. I'd like to hand over to Dr. Bermel. Thank you, Dr. Herring. One of the more interesting findings that emerged from this work was a confirmation of the idea that early treatment in MS is critical to delaying disability. Across the entire data set, 
Patients transitioning from EDSS1, which is neurologically normal, to EDSS4, which has impaired walking ability, gain 3.5 more years of functionally independent time when treated with any disease-modifying therapy versus no treatment. Patients transitioning from EDSS4 to EDSS6, that is requiring a walking aid, gain 1.4 years of time when treated with any disease-modifying therapy versus no treatment. And so really there's a great opportunity to add several functional years to a patient's life by treating earlier in the disease. In the entire data set, patients with only PIRA, that is progression independent of relapse activity, progressed at a similar pace to those who had only relapse-associated worsening events. The fastest accumulation of disability was seen in patients who had both PIRA and RAW. This article on how MS patients acquire disability demonstrates that progression in MS starts much earlier than previously believed, and this is across a wide range of MS patients. So really, I think there are four key messages that this study showed us. Number one, that confirmed relapses contribute to the accumulation of disability, primarily early in MS. Two, that progression independent of relapse activity starts already in early relapsing remitting MS and becomes the dominant driver of disability accumulation as the disease evolves. Three, pre-existing disability and older age are the principal risk factors for further disability accumulation. And so, four, using DMTs early delays disability accrual by years, with the potential to gain time being highest in the earliest stages of multiple sclerosis. Finally, I would just really like to thank the patients, the investigators, and the sites that gave their time and gave of themselves to contribute these highly informative data that we were able to pull together for this enormous study. This work would not have been possible without the help of many collaborators. Thank you all.